Hello people! Today we're going to do another set in my Wizard of Oz collection that I'm calling the Lollipop Guild. And we shall get started. I'm using a medium length uh, stiletto tip for these. And we're going to give them all a coat of this yellow. I'm going with the yellow base uh, so it will represent uh, the yellow brick road. In case anybody was wondering. Now I did have a lot of issues with some stuff on these so this, uh, this whole set uh, was a bit of a learning experience. But I did discover some cool stuff though that we're going to talk about. <clears throat> This is the, after this one, that just leaves me with the dreaded Cowardly Lion set to do. I do have a vague idea what I'm going to do now, but still not fully locked in. Okay, those had been cured, and now we're going on to the second coat. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. But I'm probably not going to do the lion nails until August. I figure August is Leo. That would be a good time for it. That's what I meant to do last year, but... I never did think of anything to do for them. Okay, those are done. We're going to cure them, and now we're going to move on to stamping. Uh, this is the plate that I used. That's the one I'm going to use. I wanted it to look like where the, the yellow brick road starts at that little spiral thing, kind of in the middle of the, of the lollipop guild area. Anyway, now I discovered that I'm using this Venalisa mud gel as a stamping polish and I only discovered this out of uh, desperation because uh, I didn't have any yellow or any color I liked stamping polish that would have gone with this so I had some white gel stamping polish that I was going to try out I didn't have the correct pigments to mix with that so I thought that I would use just a little drop of the color I wanted to mix it with. Well, that did not work at all. Now here I was going to, I'm just going to wipe off the extra on that one side with uh, some alcohol on the Q-tip. And then we're going to be ready to go. We're just going to do everything else like normal. The only, the one cool thing Okay, now see the bottom of that where the tip is? It didn't reach far enough to get to there, so I'm going to just use some of those stripes that are still on there. I'll find one that kind of fits in, and there, bam, I just put it on, and that one's done. Um, the cool thing of working with this, which I had never used a gel stamping polish before, uh, was it doesn't dry on you, so you don't have to work as quickly as you do with regular. It is a bit messier to be cleaning stuff up and do things with. Now I'm cleaning off my stamper with a lint-free wipe and alcohol. So this part was a bit messier because I couldn't just you know, use my lint roller to clean it off like I normally would with regular stamping polish. Uh, but anyway, as I was saying before, when I mixed the gel polish in with the white stamping polish that I had, it just it just beaded up all over my stamper. It wouldn't it wouldn't stay, and it was just a big mess. So I was gonna I have gold stamping polish, and I was gonna use that, but I didn't really want to. So then I thought, just like I said, out of desperation, I'm gonna try this mud gel because it's thicker and see how that works. And I was very pleasantly surprised. It works great. I'm going to show you one more time. You're just going to do this the same way you do the other stuff. Now, I only scraped that one one time. Usually, I will do it a couple of times. But that, I mean, once will work, work fine for there. And same as we always do. We're just going to pick it right up. And it picks up. See, it picked up rather pretty nicely. Just a little tiny bit on that corner, and I think that's because I smushed it as I was pulling it off. But we're just going to put it where we want. I'm going to have the same issue on this one. This is, I think this is the thumb, so it's even bigger. See how the bottom doesn't have it? 
I'm going to find some stripes that work for me down there, and then I'm just going to go ahead and put them on. What's a little bit tricky because I didn't clean that off, and I didn't want the other stripes that were on there to get on the stuff I already just stamped before that. But anyway, there we go. Okay, and then throw that into cure. And then we're going to move on to, I'm going to mix this yellow glitter. It's a real fine glitter. I'm going to mix, I mix that with some top coat. And we're going to go ahead and put that on the plain yellow ones, not the ones we've stamped already. Now I have cured that stamping, so it is cured at this point. Kind of looks like a, like a, you could kind of use that stamp as a wood grain uh, deal for Maybe some fall stuff. Okay, anyway. Then I'm going to use the regular no wipe top on the ones we stamped. And that will be ready to go in and cure. I can't tell you how excited I am to know that I can use those as stamping polishes now because that opens up a whole new world of stamping colors for me. Um, I had bought a set of 30 of their mud gels, so that'll be cool. Okay, this is the mold I'm going to be using for the little lollipops. This came from AliExpress, and it's by 3D Nail. There's, I also have another one with little candies on it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to show you that right now or not. I forget. Okay, now now I started off doing this. This I'm going to do one, and you'll see how I do it. And then I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you, you'll see me doing the rest of them, or most of the rest of them. And then I'm going to tell you what I did right and what I did wrong and what I didn't like about this. So I started off with the white. And eventually we're going to get where you can see it. Now I just wanted, this was my first uh, attempt at doing one of these with this. So I wanted to, I was just kind of doing a practice one here. But as I put that in there, it dawned on me that I wanted to do the bow in a color. So I need to clean that white back out of that middle of that bow section. At some point I think I'm going to get a, wipe and clean that off better or something I will get that cleaned out I may or may not show it but I did clean that out properly because I just got the white in the stick part and then what we're going to do after I get this cleaned out which now you can't see anyway sorry about that I'm just using alcohol on my brush to clean that out Okay, I think we're good. All right. Now, the bow, where the bow is, some of these um, suckers had bows on them and some didn't. So the ones with the bows, now this is how I started off. Um, I'm going to use, well, first I guess I'm going to finish putting the white in this part. But while that's happening, while I'm trying to get that in there, uh, I'm going to be doing the bow in pink, which at some point you'll see me get out of there. And this is the way I should have done all of them. I should have done the bows in the color like I'm going to do here. And then instead of doing the top of the lolly, the round part, in white, I should have done those in a color. And you'll see why later, but... Because well, the way I ended up painting these, they came out kind of a little sloppy looking. I mean, I didn't want them to be perfect, perfect, but they were just a little sloppier than I would have liked. And I think had I done the round part in a color, then I would have just had one swirly color to paint on instead of two. And it would have been, I think it would have come out looking nicer and neater. So if you guys are going to do it, that's the way I would do it again. If I did this again, that's the way I would do it. But, okay, now we're going to get the pink, finally. Now you'll notice I'm not curing that or flashing it yet because I was afraid if I did that, 
and then put another color on that they weren't going to stay linked together like they were going to come out in three separate sections and I didn't want it falling apart. That was my reasoning. Now I don't know if that's how it actually would have been or not, but anyway, this is a kind of a darker neon pink. It looks red there, but it really isn't. When I start to paint it on later, you'll see I'm making a bit of a mess here with this. And I have opted to go with my smaller brush to get that in there now. Now once I get this bow in here and then I clean the sides of this up a little, I will cure that for two minutes sitting in there like it is now. And then I will flip the whole mold over and cure it for another 90 seconds. So I can make sure it is cured on the front and the back all the way through. Now I was worried about using the white because that's notoriously hard to cure all the way. Uh, and there were a couple of them. I think when I did a full mold full of them, I think there was one that didn't cure all the way the white. And I had to put it back in again for another 90 seconds and let it finish. So you just have to kind of look at them and tell. And you'll be able to tell if they're starting to look kind of wrinkly or mushy looking when you try to take them out of the mold. You'll know. Okay, that one, as soon as I clean the edges up and smooth this out a little... It's going to be ready to go in, like I just told you. Two minutes, then flip over for 90 seconds after that. I think I'm just cleaning my brush so I can clean that side up, or I don't know what I'm doing at this point. Okay, yeah, that's ready. That's going in now. Okay, it's been in. It's been back out. It's been flipped. It's been back out. Okay, now we're just going to pop it back out of the mold. And I think I'm fishing around for tweezers right now. Okay, and there we go. Now see how much nicer the bow looks like this? Later on, uh, when I do the rest of them, this is the only one I did like this, and it took me a good while, so I thought it would be faster if I uh, just did the whole things all white and then just painted on what I, where I want to color. It was also a real pain in the neck to pick it up too. Uh, I was afraid I was going to break off where the stick part was because it's a little bit flimsy. Oh yeah, and I had to clean the stuff off the side because I didn't clean it off before I cured it on my mold. Now that one I cut off with scissors, but later on there's some other ones that I had to clean up and I don't know that I showed that part, but I did clean them off uh, along the edges with an X-Acto knife which quite frankly worked a lot better than the tweed, than the scissors. Okay, this is how I painted the first one. Uh, after this, I'm switching to a different method that's, that I thought would be faster. And it was, but they also came out a bit sloppier. Now here's another problem I had. I'm going to start to paint this in. I wanted this two colors, so I'm going to paint in an orange swirl. Well, first we're going to get out the rest of our polish. I'm using the same yellow I used for the the base color. Um, you've already seen the pink. I'm also using some neon orange. Uh, that one was McCart. And the green is this Nobility brand. This is a, a they call hot green. Eventually, I'll get it opened. Okay. We're going to need the detailer brush for this coming up here. And then I believe I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to start off with an orange swirl on part of this. Now where I made my mistake with this is I got the orange swirl on there all nice and neat. And then I painted the yellow swirl around it. And then the orange and the yellow started to 
like meld together and run into each other. So I had to wipe it, clean it all off. That's why it looks like sloppy mess right there. So now I'm going in. This is the second time now. Once I get this orange on here, then I'm going to flash it, which is what I should have done. And I know better. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. But once the orange is on, I will flash cure. Then I will go, go in and put the yellow on. And then I'll give it a full cure after that. I'm sorry, I'm kind of out of shot again. Uh, okay, that's flashed. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the yellow. I'm just going to go where that all that white is around there. I'm going to do that in yellow. Now this is where I'm saying if I had done the round part of the lolly in the different colors, then I would have just had to paint on that one swirly stripe like where the orange is and it would have been, I think it would have looked a lot better. Now this one I, I pretty much covered solidly with the yellow on the rest of this. The other ones that you're going to see me painting in a bit, I wanted some of the white to show through on the on the top of there so I didn't fully paint it in. But in the end it came out just making it look kind of sloppy. So yeah, I wouldn't do that it that way again. But that's ready to be cured. And in it goes. And I will get myself cleaned up here and organized. And then I'm going to get started on the, I'm going to start on filling this tray of these again. I don't know if I leave all of this on here, right there, I'm just cleaning it out a little. I don't know if I'm going to show my, me doing this whole part, because you guys have seen me fill these in before, you know how it goes. This is where I just decided I'm just filling everything in with white, and I'm just going to paint it after it comes out. Which is not the way I would recommend doing it, as I just said before. This part took me a little bit to do because uh, I think that bottle of white is getting low and I wasn't getting very much on my brush at a time. But I'm starting off, I'm just filling in the round parts on all of them first and then I'll go back with my little brush and fill in the, the sticks and the, and the bows. Okay, and here we go. This one's all cured now. See if I can get it off of there without breaking it, which eventually I do, but I don't know if you're going to see it again. Oh, yo, yo. Here we go. Oh, yeah, see, I, it was stuck in on there, and I didn't want to pull it real hard and break off the, the stick part, so... A little delicate. And that's that's another reason I decided maybe I shouldn't be doing them on those tacky things because I might break some. But there it is. I eventually got it off. That, frankly, is the neatest one, even though it kind of looks a bit sloppy, too. Okay, there's the candy mold. I'm, I'm going to just fill these. I'm just going to do... I needed some little candies to fill in on some of this. Some of these other ones where I didn't want to put a lolly on, like on the pinky and stuff. So that's the candy mold. It's also made by 3D Nail. I got this one, a couple more flower molds, uh, all at the same time, uh, as I said earlier, from Allie. While you're watching me fill this mold, and we're talking about molds, uh, the other day I stumbled across a lady that was selling silicone molds 
for the little daisy flowers that we've all been using on everything lately. The little, like the ones I have on my current set of nails, the teal nails, the little white daisies that come with the little caviar beads that you pop in the middle. You know those ones that we've all seen everywhere? Well, she had these silicone molds for them, so I was so excited. I just jumped on that and I ordered one right away. So hopefully it's going to be here in the next uh, few days. But that's exciting for me because now I can have uh, flowers that match the exact color of the polish I'm using. I can make them, you know, whatever colors I want. You could make, you could use acrylic to make them. Originally, people were using these and making this stuff out of acrylic, which you can you can do. It's perfectly fine. It works great. Um, the only problem is when you're putting them on the nails, the acrylic dries and it's hard. It's not moving. So, as you guys know, so you can't like bend the uh, you can't bend whatever your little 3D thing is onto your nail it's going to be hard it's going to stick out which is why i was so excited when i realized i could start doing this stuff with gel polish because once they come out of there they're still a little flexible they're still flexible so when you put it on your nail you can flatten it out i'll show you we'll see some of that when i get to putting those lollipops on but you can flatten it out to your nail so you don't have any bits sticking up for your hair to get caught on or whatever else to get caught on which is nice because there's that is so aggravating when you get your hair caught on stuff or it gets caught on something and you break part of your your piece off of there and you know we all know how aggravating that kind of stuff is so that uh, being able to make these out of something that's flexible that I can flatten out to the nail uh, was a huge game changer for me Okay, we get this pink one on here and clean up the side parts. So see, if you just take some alcohol on your brush and just kind of scoop it back in towards the center of the, the mold right there, clean those edges up, and then when it pops out of there, it's nice and clean. You don't have to do anything with it. If you don't clean all that sloppage off of there, you're going to be sitting there. Uh, once they're cured with an exacto knife or something else trying to cut all that stuff off and it's a real pain especially if you got really tiny little pieces of stuff like tiny little like objects you're trying to work with it's real hard to hold on to the things and cut stuff off of them at the same time so it's just easier if you clean them up in the first place before you cure them I'm sorry if you guys can hear the motorcycle out there or whatever that is. We live in a rural area and there's a lot of motorcycles and ATVs and loud trucks and cars and nonsense going by here. Usually at the worst possible time. Alright, I see one little corner of that that didn't get in. There we go. Okay, I think that's ready to cure. So well, that'll go in the same way, two minutes, just like it is, and I'll flip it over for 90 seconds on the other side, then it'll be done. And now that those are now done and cured, if you just bend that mold a little bit, you'll see they'll just pop right out, just grab them from the edge. There's the pink one, dark pink, and we've got orange. And the green one. I shall get the green one out. And as I said, I'm not showing you the rest of the other mold because you know you don't need to see me do that a bunch of times. But there are the little candies I will be using. Okay, now we're back to these. Now these have been come out of the mold. They're all cured. Now this is the way I decided to paint the the rest of these because I thought it would be faster and easier. But as I said, I wasn't real super happy with how they came out. Plus, I had an issue with, uh, I, I don't know if this is the first group or the second group, because I did two trays worth of them. But the first one, I had no problems with painting like this. The second one, the second group of them, they kept wanting to flip over, and they didn't want to stay still. And they, it just, uh, it was kind of a, a mess. 
See, there's already one that flipped over. Sorry if this is going to be a little hard to see. See, you can see through my glove those daisy flowers that were on that thumb. Those are the ones I was just talking about. And there's a hair. Of course, there has to be a hair on something every time. And now I'm trying to get my better tweezers so I can get a grip on it. I just did not want to get off of there. There we go. Oh, no. There we go. Okay, I'm going to finish up with this. Now what I did was I went through on all of these and I'm going to be putting on whatever colors I'm putting on, like half of it. And then I will flash cure and then I'll go back and finish the rest of the color and then cure, give it a full cure. See, this is one of the ones that's flipping over. I was trying to be extra careful handling these two because I was just so afraid those little sticks were going to break off real easy. Luckily, none of them did. Should have had a hold of that one as I was doing that. I think I think I flipped it over at some point trying to do this. Maybe it was this one. I mean, these little ones I decided to try a kind of a dotted stripey looking pattern instead of the swirly one, just for something different. This is just a bag that uh, I've got something that I ordered came in. You know, some kind of nail stuff came in there, so I figured this would be a little, it's, it's kind of a stiff plastic, so I thought it would be easier for me to work off of, and then I could just pick that whole thing up and put them in the lamp instead of trying to move them one by one, or stick them to the nail stand like I did with that first one. Now you can see this is the same pink I used on that other bow, but when you get it spread out a little bit more, it's not as thick of a big pile. It's a nicer looking pink, I think. And of course, I'm out of shot over there again. where the little swirly part is in there was nice and easy to paint because uh, you just kind of put your brush down in that little groove and swirl it around and it just goes in there nicely for the most part. And this one I'm striping also. Now believe it or not, I think I did speed this section up to like one and a half times because I know it took me a while to do all these. And we're going to move on to green now. Whoopsie. That was one of the ones that started causing me problems. Now my big fat fingers are in the way so you can't see even though I am in shot this time.
I don't know why this particular one was giving me problems because it's a big one. It should have been easier. There we go. And those are ready to flash. Okay, I flashed those and now I'm going to finish up with the rest of the whatever I'm going to put on these. While you're watching me finish painting these, let me go back to the, the mud gel stamping situation. Um, I originally bought the mud gels to use as a gel paint. So, and I really haven't used them for much of anything yet. I think I've used them a little bit. I mean, I swatched them, but that was as far as I got. So it was nice to have. Now I know I have another use for them. Besides just using them as gel paint, I can stamp with them. So that was nice. Oops. I'm tempted to... They have 60 colors of the mud gels, and I had bought a, 30, a set of 30. I'm tempted to get the other set of 30, but I don't know. I can't afford to do it right now. Maybe at some point I'll be able to do that. And whatever I'm painting over there you now can't see again. I believe I'm about to switch to the orange here. I was thinking of shooting a video of uh, my nail room and my setup and everything. If anybody's interested in that, let me know in the comments. But you know, some people do that. I may just do it anyway and keep it in my back pocket in case there's a week where I don't get a video done. Um, which is possible with the, the health of my parents right now. I mean, you know, I could be having to drop everything here and run out there for a while, so I don't know. It might be the way to go, then I'll at least have that in case I don't have a chance to do videos at some point. So anyway, let me know if you guys are interested in that or no. What's new with you guys? I hope everybody's doing well out there. I've got to go to a doctor's appointment in about an hour. So I'm trying to get this done. I hear my husband has just come home because he had to leave work early to take me there. So we only have one vehicle. So hopefully he's not going to come bursting in here making a bunch of noise since I'm recording right now. If he does, I apologize ahead of time. Let's see, on this one, I think I painted uh, just the top of that one. I don't know that I filled it in all the way. I kind of wanted some of the white to show through because sometimes you see white on the Raleigh's and then the color, but I don't know, in the end it kind of just made it look like it wasn't finished all the way and a little sloppy. I'm also not really happy with those stripey ones, uh, those two smaller stripey ones that either, but I didn't want to make them all exactly the same kind, so 
All right, we're ready to start gluing on. We got a trusty rhinestone uh, gem glue. And I'm using a dotting tool to get the glue on the nail. Okay, I'm just trying to, I'm just going to try to decide what I'm going to put on here and where it's going to go before I put glue on there. going to mainly put the part on where I want the main part of it to be. I will go in, in after that and get glue on the stick part. Don't. Well, that didn't go very well, did it? Clearly, it didn't get pressed down into the glue. Now see how that stick part is, is sticking up? We're going to slide this up farther so it's not, and we're going to turn it just a skosh so it's got some nail under it. And then I am going to get a little bit of glue. Now this was kind of a hard way to do this. I, I got my little nail glue brush out later to do the other ones because that was not the way I should have been doing that. Think of all the time I'm saving you guys by you watching me doing things the wrong way then you don't have to make those mistakes. Okay, now I've got the brush out with the glue. Okay. And I'm going to press that down again and the stick. I don't remember if this is the one that I used the thing for or not. It might be. Okay, I'm just going to press those down into the glue really well so they're going to stay down. Oh, uh, this is not the one I ended up using my little light for, but... Okay, then the other one is going to go on down here. Um, on that one, I decided to go with one of the little candy pieces. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave it sticking up that way. <laughs> now notice how I can bend that down so it's flush with the nail. And, and it bends easily. If that were acrylic, you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, I guess so this is where I'm going to use my light, I think. Okay, I got my little LED flashlight. Now what I'm going to do, if I get myself lined up properly here, I'm going to put a little bit more glue under the end of that so I can hold the edges down. Okay, now this is a delicate operation here. Okay, I'm going to use my tweezers and I'm going to hold both ends down of that candy. I'm going to hold them down with my tweezers and then I'm going to flash that for a little bit. So it stays down, the glue cures enough to hold it down. On the other side, sorry for my hand, and then I'm going to hold that little stick down because it was popping up a bit, and I'm going to flush that too. Okay, now see how they're lying down flush now? Yay! Okay, then those I will just put on my rack, and when I get that whole row done, then I will give them a full cure in the lamp. This is the middle one where I'm going to put some more. I'm just going to carry on some more of these. 
as I was going on, I started making a line for the stick with the glue, so I didn't need to go back and do it later. And now for the rest of this part, we're just gluing on stuff and gluing stuff onto other stuff. Now you can flash the, I mean, you can cure these one by one if you, if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. I like to try and save wear and tear on my lamp because this is already the third lamp I've had by, uh, doing as many things at a time in there as I can. And that was me just getting glue under the end of those sticks so I can make sure the little ends are, are stuck down. One thing I like about using these tweezers is they open up fairly wide so I can use them to hold things down. Now before I had that little flashlight, I would get my stuff set up in the lamp crouch down so I could look inside the lamp, get the tweezers and shove them in there, and hold the thing down, and then turn the lamp on. That was a real, real pain in the butt. So I've had a few occasions to use that little flashlight lamp now, and it's really, it is really helpful, I have to admit. I was skeptical at first, is that really necessary? But yes, I can see how it, now how uh, helpful it is on some things. Now this part, uh, making the lollies and this whole part is kind of a long process, but I wanted you guys to see how it goes. And this set of nails uh, was a two-day project for me, so as I know I've said before, I only have time to work on stuff for usually maybe two to two and a half hours in the afternoon, so... Whatever I don't get done the first day has to happen in the second day. And some of them have run over into three days. The rest of these are just going to be putting stuff on. As you have seen. Okay, that was a bit a bit much glue as I'm looking at it. You probably don't you don't really need that much glue. I have to say, though, I'm really happy with this nail glue brand, I mean, this uh, gem glue, because uh, I, I very rarely do have, ever have anything come off with this stuff, and I'm doing all kinds of stuff. You know, I'm outside gardening, digging around in the dirt with no gloves on, you know, doing dishes, laundry, you know, but I'm... My husband and I are working on finishing, refinishing our dining room set and all eight chairs. So I did all the sanding of the chairs with the power sander. Didn't lose anything. Now I'm in the process of staining all the chairs, which I'm almost done with. I have only two more chairs to go. Then I gotta go over all of them and clear coat them with two layers and then finally we can put it all back together with the seat cushion. This has been like a year long, long project you guys. This table thing. Okay those are all on there now. They're going in for a full cure. And now oh wait before I put that one in I'm going to hold those ends down because I wanted them to stay down better. Okay there we are. They're cured. Now I'm just going in with the top coat and I am going to cover everything with it. Not a super thick layer because I don't want them po uh, pooling in the inside of that. Now you can see those are the daisies on my nails that I was talking about that I haven't been getting the mold for. Which I can't wait. Anyway, um, in case you're wondering what that white stuff is all over my hands. Uh, I had taken off my gloves. 
at this point because I thought I was done and I forgot I hadn't top coated. But that is cornstarch on my hands. I put that on there before I put my gloves on because it's way easier to get them on. And it does kind of absorb a little bit of the sweat in there. Although, as you guys have heard me complain before, I still, it's still, my hands get really sweaty and it runs out. But I got to say too, putting those uh, scrunchies around my arms, right under where the gloves end, uh, keeps the sweat from running down my arms now, so I don't have that issue anymore. So that's something. It looks ridiculous, but it works. Okay, those have all been cured, and here we are, all done. And there you go. Welcome to the Lollipop Guild. If you liked uh, what you saw, please give me a like, and if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. I really appreciate you watching my videos. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.